this is a first for me but the day has come where I have to apologize to a fictional character. Last time when the new and first chapter of Boruto Blue Vortex was released I said that I didn't understand or support the decision to choose Shikamaru as the next Hokage. My concerns were solely about Shikamaru's strength and his ability to protect Kanoa against powerful opponents like the ones I expect to arrive at some point that is the Utsutsuki clan. We already have indirect confirmation that this will happen, there is a sort of law among the clan. If someone dies on the planet while trying to harvest it, they will return to the planet to finish the job. Most likely it's to prevent another race to dominate or because chakra doesn't just disappear. So if an Utsutsuki who might have harvested 100 planets and absorbed the chakra from all these lives dies on a the planet, their chakra becomes part of that planet system. It's part of the universal law. This is how reincarnation works. It's why Shibai's power could have been extracted. It's why tailed beasts can't die unless their chakra is destroyed. Knowing that all Utsutsukis who are ready to be consumed by another plays a karma on someone to return to life, then Kinshiki came to earth with Momoshiki knowing he will die. This was in case Momoshiki was too weak to handle the humans, especially since they knew humans could have defeated Kaguya. This means Kinshiki has likely already reincarnated in the Utsutsuki dimension or wherever they live and will report what happened. So yes, an Otsutsuki invasion is likely coming in the future. And Shikamaru is simply not built for that. Not even Naruto and Sasuke. So technically I wasn't wrong. I also mentioned that the main reason he is a good fit despite this is because he's extremely intelligent. After the video was published, I thought more about the qualities Shikamaru brings to the table as a Hokage. I focused on why these qualities are important right now given the current circumstances instead of trying to find traits he shares with other Hokages. The truth is, despite his intelligence, he might not be the best fit to protect Kino on his own. However, he's literally Naruto's brain. While Naruto is very smart and battles, he isn't, to put it simply, the brightest in other areas. So Shikamaru is essential for Naruto's leadership, In this way Shikamaru truly represents the core of Naruto's leadership. It's important to understand this, especially because some people truly doubt if Naruto is really dead or if Boruto might be innocent. So the Hokage position is in a very vulnerable position at the moment, but with Shikamaru in safe hands. Imagine Kawaki would be the Hokage, it's crazy to say that, but at this point it's possible. So Shikamaru being the Hokage is a good thing, and that's probably why he is Hokage. It all starts to make sense when we understand that Shikamaru is believed to have an IQ of at least 200. This is a minimum estimate because just like in our world, there's a point where you can't easily measure IQ anymore for those big brain geniuses. You will need specific tests and even then the result might still be a vague figure like over 200. It's also understand that while you can drastically increase your IQ by training, it does naturally rise over time especially up to a certain age. For example, someone who takes an IQ test at 13 will likely score higher when they are 20 and 30. This period is when IQ can increase the most. After that it grows slowly, however as I mentioned the increase becomes limited once you're fully grown. Now consider this, Shikamaru was only 13 when it was determined that his IQ was off the charts, meaning it was at least 200 but not exceeding 300. Given this, his IQ might now range between 300 and 400, potentially making him more intelligent than any real human who has ever lived on Earth. Now don't get me wrong, IQ isn't something that allows you to defy the gods, Shikamaru is certainly still affected, however you need to understand that someone with an IQ over 300 sees the world completely different. Every sentence and everything they observe is processed differently, especially if it's connected to an event. When the world changed, Shikamaru's brain faced uncertainty. Even if reality seems as logical as it can be, he has no choice but to approach it logically. This is especially true from the perspective of someone with an IQ over 300. Anyone with an IQ, let's say close to 100, understands that if you question something controversial that 99% believe to be true, then there's little point in convincing them. He has no other choice but to play along. That's the situation Shikamaru found himself in. The proof that he knows everything lies in his decision to become Hokage. I'm not entirely sure, but I think.
think Shikamaru once mentioned that the Hokage position seemed annoying and it wasn't for him. Being an advisor, however, is a different story. Moreover, Shikamaru is wearing the Hokage cape with flames, a design that only Minato and Naruto wore. This might hint that Shikamaru is only acting as a Hokage because he believes Naruto is still alive. He might have even spoken to Himawari or noticed some inconsistencies. This belief is also supported by the fact that Shikamaru's Hokage head hasn't been built yet, as we saw in the first chapter depicting post time skip events. If this is true, then Shikamaru is temporarily replacing Naruto, but why? Because he doesn't know what is happening. What he does know is that something has happened and for some reason only Sarada knows about it. This means Shikamaru can't trust anyone. He feels he must become the Hokage so that nobody else does. Fearing that due to mind manipulation anyone, even Sarada, might be working with the enemy, whoever that might be. Suspecting Kawaki doesn't help either. Shikamaru might think that if Kawaki is evil, he might not even remember his actions. It's a complex situation, which is why Shikamaru can't discuss it with Sarada. He believes that Sarada being the one who remembers is likely being watched by those who know. We shouldn't forget that Sarada is still a child. Even if she's one of the main characters, it's such an adult thing to not trust kids. If Shikamaru thinks Ada might be involved, especially since these events started when she appeared in Kanoa, he'd be wary of her ability to see everything. If he suspects her, he might also believe that acting suspiciously, for example, talking to Sarada like she's sane, could alert whoever used that ability on him. He fears they might use it again, and this time he might not notice that something is off. The fresher the event, the fewer people and surroundings align with the false narrative. For instance, it's been confirmed that the people in Kanoa did notice strange occurrences that didn't match their memories. However, they mainly questioned these anomalies right after they happened, when Boruto's involvement was evident everywhere. As time passed, these doubts faded as life continued and Kawaki gradually established his presence in Kanoa. Lie became reality. If Shikamaru's memory were altered again, he would wake up in a world without any doubts. Because the world has already moved on, this means he wouldn't have any logical clues to analyze. So he has no choice but to play along and not trust anyone, knowing that Ada could be listening at any moment. That's why he's Hokage, he doesn't allow anyone else to even approach Naruto's seat. As long as Shikamaru controls the village, he can uphold Naruto's will, ensuring Kanoa doesn't head in the direction desired by the person who made Naruto disappear. That's the whole idea. This is why Shikamaru is the most important Okage so far. However, this doesn't mean that Shikamaru avoids meeting other people. We know that Ada's abilities have limitations which can be quite significant if you know how to handle them. For example, she can't read things. Written in letters she doesn't recognize, so you could read the letter. She also can't access mind communication. They might also use secret language or send and read letters in the dark to hide from Ada. There are various ways. Amado is also very important. Together with Shikamaru, they are a powerhouse. Amado is likely the first one to understand everything because he's familiar with all of Ada's abilities. And his documents clearly show Kawaki, not Boruto. His love for his daughter is stronger than any possible lie, and love is possibly the key to begin with, as we can see with Sumire, Sarada, and Himawari. And Amado's love, although not for Boruto, is still affected because of the Shinjutsu. The number one person Amado speaks to is Shikamaru. This has been the case since the moment he entered Kanoa. This implies that Shikamaru likely knows the truth, either through logical conclusions or directly from Amado. And if Shikamaru trusts anyone at this moment, then it will be Sasuke, Naruto's right hand. He knows that Sasuke's actions don't make sense and that something about Sarada isn't right either. So he probably deduced that Sasuke's actions were influenced by Sarada. He will 100% make a connection between Sasuke and Sarada, only an idiot wouldn't, so everyone in the village. If Shikamaru managed to communicate with Sasuke, he would explain the situation. However, Sarada isn't aware of this. The fact she mentioned she doesn't respect Shikamaru suggests a future moment when she might realize that certain people were aware all along and were actually working to save Kanoa. This sets the stage for her character development and showcases how incredible a Hokage Shikamaru truly is. We all know that Shikamaru can't become a renowned Hokage through sheer strength, but he will be remembered as the Hokage who saved Kanoa and the world without battle. What do you think of this theory? Let me know in the comments and if you want to see more Boruto content then subscribe to this channel with the notification bell activated. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye!